Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are digging into a monster new research report. And I mean monster. This thing is like 142 pages long from Google Cloud's Dora research program that's trying to answer the question of how developers are actually using AI. One of the lurking questions for some behind all of this AI adoption is, is it actually making us more effective? And while I think that intuitively the people who use these tools most would argue vociferously and in contrast to any report that said otherwise that yes, these tools are game changers, people who are thinking about this stuff more systematically obviously don't just want vibes, or at least not vibes alone. And that was why people sat up and took notice in July of this year when Meter came out with a research paper that suggested that in spite of open source developers thinking that they were more effective with AI, they were actually being less productive. They were moving more slowly. Basically, in that study, there was a gap between people's perception of their enhanced productivity with AI and what the data was actually showing. Now, I've dug a lot into what I think are the problems with that study. It was quite limited in its methodology. There were only 16 developers that participated. What's more, Meter's definition of an AI user coming into the study was very, very different from what I think most people would define as a regular AI user. But still, some people found the results interesting and wondered if there was more to the story of AI productivity than the obvious benefits that meet the eye. Now with this Google study, we have a much more comprehensive look at developer patterns. And because this is the second year that they've done this, we also have a little bit of a longitudinal contrast. And what's interesting is that some of the conclusions and takeaways are very much not restricted exclusively to the software and coding use case of AI, but I think apply for all sort of work-related AI adoption. Now, by way of background, in terms of the methodology here, Dora is the DevOps Research and Assessment Group and has been a part of Google Cloud since 2018. As I mentioned, this is the second year of their AI development-focused report. To get the information here, they took in hundreds of hours of qualitative data, as well as surveying nearly 5,000 technology professionals globally, and that survey happened in July of this year. So these results while not from like yesterday, are still pretty recent. Let's talk about the big banner headlines that they chose to highlight first. First of all, to the shock of no one, AI adoption among software development professionals is now up to 90%. That's up an additional 14% from last year. Now, obviously, we are getting to the very top of that, given that there's not that many new people left to adopt, but still meaningful growth between last year and this year. A more significant stat when it comes to this question of do these tools make people more productive is that 80% of developers surveyed that includes, by the way, the 10% who don't use AI, report that AI has increased their productivity. So among the people who are using AI, that number is even higher. And on top of them just being more productive, 59% also say that AI has positively impacted their code quality. At the same time, there are still big challenges. They write, our report uncovers a surprising trust paradox. They found that despite everyone using it, there's still 30% of developers that only trust AI a little or not at all which, by the way, is split between 23% for a little and 7% for not at all. And maybe the biggest takeaway, and one that we'll come back to, is this. While AI is boosting individual performance, its effect on organizations is more complex. This year's research shows that AI adoption is now linked to higher software delivery throughput, meaning teams are releasing more software and applications. However, the ongoing challenge remains of ensuring software works as intended before it's delivered to users. And I think if you wanted to sum this up in one way, it's like with any new force, AI is very clearly solving some problems and making people more efficient in certain ways, while also creating its own challenges. The overwhelming sense you get from this report is that the new challenges are a cost that is very much worth it for the benefits that come with this technology, but they are new challenges to be overcome. So let's dig now a little bit more into some of the other things that Dora found. Dora found meaningful increases in individual effectiveness, organizational performance, valuable work, code quality, product performance, software delivery throughput, and team performance. Interestingly, given how much some people have thought that maybe one of AI's benefits would be to reduce work strain, burnout remains around the same as it did in a non-AI context. What's more, and going back to this idea that there are costs associated with all these benefits, one negative thing that also increased was software delivery instability. When it came to how much devs are using AI and when they started, there was clearly a big inflection point around the release of Claude 3 and 3.5. The median start date for developers in this survey was April 2024, with a big spike up in June-July of 2024, which was, of course, when Claude 3.5 came out. In terms of how much time developers are using with AI, the median is two hours, and it is slightly slanted towards the downside, with the biggest portion of respondents having it somewhere in the one-hour range. And there's definitely a growth in reflexivity and reliance on AI. When asked how often they turn to AI when encountering a problem or task, among the AI users, 
39% said sometimes, 26% said almost half the time, 27% said most of the time, and 7% said always. When asked how much they rely on AI, 30% said a little, 37% said a moderate amount, 20% said a lot, and 8% said a great deal. And when it came to the tasks that they were using AI for, 71% were using it for writing new code, 66% were using it to modify existing code, 64% for writing documentation, 62% each for creating test cases and explaining concepts, 61% for analyzing data, 59% for debugging, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It goes down from there. But you can see there, right at the top, this is not just a tool that's being used to interact with existing code bases. This is absolutely producing net new code. Now, one thing that's revealing, I think, in terms of how far along in their AI journey these survey participants are, when asked how they used AI, only 41% said that they were using IDEs like Cursor. The biggest portion, 55%, were still using chatbots. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they consider something like Claude Code, but this suggests to me that a lot of this usage is still fairly nascent relative to, for example, the power users that we talk about and quote on this show all the time. And while I gave you the headline numbers on how people perceived it to improve their personal results, the breakdowns are frankly even more impressive. For example, when it came to their perceived impact on individual productivity, 41% said it slightly increased productivity, 31% said it moderately increased productivity, and 13% said it extremely increased productivity. That's compared to 9% who said it had no impact, and just 3% who said it slightly decreased, 1% who said it moderately decreased, and less than 1% who said it extremely decreased. Similar story with perceived impact on code quality. A bigger portion in that group, 30%, said that it had no impact, and a slightly bigger group, 7%, said that it had slightly worsened their code quality, but 31% said it had slightly improved code quality, 21% said it moderately improved, and 7% said it extremely improved. Now, the story you've heard so far is largely about individual performance. And if you are a regular listener of the AI Daily Brief, you'll know that individual performance is only one part of the larger AI adoption story especially in the work context, when it comes to getting these much vaunted productivity gains, organizations have to think beyond just individual worker productivity enhancements and instead think about how they redesign systems to capture those gains and translate them into business signals the market can measure. And that was definitely a big underlying subtext of the whole Dora report. At the very beginning, Google Cloud says that their key takeaway is that AI is an amplifier. They write that it magnifies the strength of high-performing organizations and the dysfunction of struggling ones. The greatest returns on AI investment, they say, come not from the tools themselves, but from a strategic focus on the underlying organizational system, the quality of the internal platform, the clarity of workflows, and the alignment of teams. Without this foundation, AI creates localized pockets of productivity that are often lost to downstream chaos. And this is the story that we see over and over in enterprises incredibly jagged adoption, incredibly jagged performance, and much of that jaggedness being based on the systems and environments into which the AI is coming, rather than the quality of the models or the quality of the users on their own. Trying to go beyond superficial analysis, Dora looked at a set of eight factors to help cluster and understand different team archetypes. Those factors included team performance, product performance, software delivery throughput, software delivery instability, individual effectiveness, valuable work, friction, and burnout. They ended up clustering these into seven team archetypes. Foundational challenges, the legacy bottleneck, constrained by process, pragmatic performers, stable and methodical, high impact, low cadence, harmonious high achiever. These are obviously interpretations of data and reflect patterns that they saw over and over again within the teams they surveyed. Now, part of why this sort of clustering is valuable is to help teams understand what new systems they need to put into place or what existing legacy systems could be holding them up when it comes to successfully integrating these new tools. Taking, for example, cluster two, the legacy bottleneck, they write teams in this cluster are in a constant state of reaction where unstable systems dictate their work and undermine their morale. Key metrics for product performance are low while the team delivers regular updates, the value realized is diminished by ongoing quality issues. They find significant and frequent challenges with the stability of the software and its operational environment, leading to a high volume of unplanned reactive work. This also leads to elevated levels of friction and burnout in the team. They found that 11% of the respondents were in this cluster. Obviously, the identification of a roadmap of problems also creates a potential path for solutions. And in fact, the second part of the report, starting about a third of the way through, so making up a big chunk of it, is all about solutions for these challenges and for better adoption. The TLDR of their whole thrust comes on page 81 where they write, to understand what is needed to scale AI impact from individual productivity gains to organizational level benefits, 
we need to think about systems. Organizations are less like collections of individuals and tools and more like networks of interdependent parts. Work flows through teams, processes, policies, infrastructure, and shared norms. While individual capabilities play a critical role in shaping outcomes, overall performance emerges from how all these parts interact. To support this, they release something they're calling their DORA AI Capabilities Model. It's a group of seven AI capabilities that they believe amplify the benefits of AI adoption. Those capabilities include one, a clear and communicated AI stance, two, healthy data ecosystems, three, AI accessible internal data, four, strong version control practices, five, working in small batches, six, a user-centric focus, and seven, quality internal platforms. Now, pretty soon, I think maybe even for LRS this week, I'm going to be doing a readout of some analysis that we've run on the thousands of executive interviews we've done as a part of Superintelligence AI planning platform. And a lot of the story that we have found is very similar to what's expressed here, both in terms of the challenges and how much it really is organizational challenges that hold AI adoption back, as well as some of these remediations. As I record this, I'm on the road for a keynote. And one of the things that I always hammer is that when organizations are asking what we need to do to adopt AI well, the short answer is everything. It's leadership, it's data readiness, it's new systems design, and new fundamental thinking. In any case, there is so much more in this report that is beyond the scope of this particular episode. If you really want a very data-rich exploration of how AI is getting adopted inside developer communities and enterprises more broadly, I highly suggest you check it out. You can find the report on blog.google. It just came out yesterday, so it is hot off the presses. Ultimately, I think it's an incredibly positive thing that the shift that we're starting to see in all this analysis is a move away from whether these tools are effective to instead a question of how do we take what are clearly individual gains in effectiveness and productivity and scale them up across the organization to make systems and organizations as a whole that simply work better. That, of course, is going to be the job of the next decade or more. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.